Okay, this is one of the rooms inside of the uh, City of Rock, to you, if you can call it that. It's a structure. Let's see about if I can explain the status of my search here list. So, for two weeks, my hand has been in a splint that prevented any kind of motion except for just the fingertips like this, just barely moving. So my wrist is still very stiff. I had a compound fracture from uh, falling on that wheel or um, some glare ice on the side of the mountain at lower elevations. The top was all powder, so there was no issue. Now my arm is uh, completely stiff. And, uh, of course, the surgeon says, oh, we really got to get that arm moving. But really, uh, just by the nature of it, uh, everything the doctor has done up to this point has been uh, furthering the injury to the wrist. So now it's quite swollen and difficult to move. So, for example, this is the, after two days, the splint was removed. This is the total range of motion compared to almost 180 with my uh, healthy wrist. It's probably like 20, 30 degrees. And that's just the scar where they inserted the pins. I can show the pin in the separate picture. This is where the bone jutted out in the compound fracture, so there's a lot of bleeding here. And then this is the hole made in the top of my arm where the uh, other pin from the top came in. So there's pins from the top and the bottom. A total of 12 pins. But in order for your arm to grow straight and back together, it's got to be on a straight bone. Your body's actually going to heal itself, I guess. It's going to grow a new wrist, a new wrist joint, basically. And uh, the way that's going to work is you're going to do some exercise and try to stimulate the motion as opposed to when it was locked up in the splint and just the genetic information in your arm is going to try to repair the damage as best it can and return it to this kind of a wrist versus this kind of a wrist. And you can see the difference in the size due to swelling. So the doctor, of course, the surgeon wants your arm to return to motion but really everything that's done the first two weeks is really re-injuring your arm further because you come in, you have a fracture, you're at the emergency room, he, he comes along and he, uh, first of all he has to straighten the arm out, he's twisting his broken arm, and pulling on it, putting basically 20 pounds of weight, pulling down here with my fingers tied up so we can get a straight x-ray. And uh, after that's done, surgery 12 hours or so later and they cut this incision, screw in this titanium alloy uh, arrangement of pins to put the shattered bone back together into one piece. In my case it's the thumb side bone or the radius and it's now straightened out but you can't move it at first, at least according to the surgical procedure. You've got to put it and immobilize it, all except I say for the very top little fingers. And all that time it's stiffening, so that's a further injury. You pushed on it, you cut it open, you pushed on the tendons, you pushed on the nerves. And in my case, the main tendon connecting the biggest muscle in the forearm to the wrist was, was severed. And then to make room was a bone under repair and then it was reattached after the surgery and then it was sewn up. So you have a lot of surgical injury and then really immobilizing your arm for two weeks is another source of injury because just if you took your healthy wrist and you put it together inside of a splint or cast for two weeks and didn't allow the joints to move, they would stiffen up. So now I have very stiff wrists and uh, so this is really almost day zero, or day two, of uh, repairing my wrist, which is going to have 
happen naturally, but we're going to do these rehab exercises as a means of uh, stimulating the repair. One of the passive exercises I'm doing is try to take your arm like this and flatten it against the head and try to get them to imitate the motion of the left and right. And that ideally, I should be able to move it far right. should always try to squeeze like this to do the exercises and then um, get that you know those muscles to re-establish themselves in my uh, in my forearm and to move those tendons and try to every day increase the range of motion and then passively I try to put these hands together and get my left hand See, basically, I should be able to bend these fingers backwards and in and out. But I really can't do that by itself because my hand is not. See, this hand can do it, but this hand is sort of like work. But that's the path. But what this hand can do is squeeze a large grapefruit sized ball or like a shoulder or something. And you can keep squeezing it. And that keeps exercising it. For two weeks there was no exercise, and now it's getting quite a lot of exercise. So. Hopefully, I'm going to try to keep track of the range of motion, measure what this angle is every day, and try to document that. Maybe I'll take a bunch of day by day, uh, figure out a way to set up a, a mounting for the camera so the position of the camera is the same every day and the position of the hands is every day. And you should see maybe this arm shrink down and the uh, range of motion increase and it's really just up to my arm to rebuild itself you know um, again you know the surgeon and the rehab guy are really at odds because the rehab guy wants to uh, the rehabilitation specialists want to start moving the arm immediately but just as part of the surgical procedure the uh, hand is immobilized now i've been given some sort of folk advice too. <laughs> One piece of folk advice is that the next time this happens, you should put sugar on the bleeding area if you have a compound fracture and that'll stop the bleeding. I not seriously didn't get any idea of uh, doing it again or uh, putting sugar on it next time. Another piece of advice was to take my arm and rub an egg on it and then rub down and that will pull out the negative energy from my arm and then don't look at the egg, don't show it to anybody, but just bury it. And that'll bury the day negative energy. Okay. Uh, and the third piece of folk advice is some guy told me that uh, I should just learn to be left-handed right away as soon as possible because uh, I'll never regain the use of my right arm, so just forget about it. And, you know, but with rehab people, the first time they say, like, keep moving it, you'll, you know, your motion, your exercise, your uh, stretching of it will basically rebuild it. But basically, I think that it's a large fault. And I definitely believe that, uh, especially these rehabilitation exercises, can stimulate rebuilding and uh, re mobility, re mobilization, let's say, of the wrist. And uh, I don't mind trying some of the other things. Uh, don't worry, uh, I'll become left-handed. Uh, it's, uh, it's no improvement occurs, so there's no reason to worry about that one. So that's really just the debt. This is really the beginning of healing my arm. The surgery, he just lays out a straight bone so that when my arm, so that my, this is my interpretation, when my arm rebuilds itself, rebuilds itself. Mobilization returns. All that will be returning to a straight wrist. So that it has the potential to be a high functioning wrist. If I didn't go undergo the surgery, if I didn't straighten out the arm, 
I didn't put the pins in there, the wrist would rebuild itself. It would be building itself on a very quick separated by some distance, it can't be really figure out how to put them back together. The surgeon has to go in there and reattach them physically together. And then they'll grow together or not grow together or do whatever they do on their own. That's up to you. I mean, or your arm to do on its own. And the same thing goes for the wrist. I mean, you know, if the bones are scattered and separated, there's nothing in your arm that will enable you to reassemble those pieces into a straight bone. That has to be done mechanically by a surgeon. But the fact that he went in there and he rearranged things and he pushed on tendons and he pushed on nerves and he severed a tendon and then reattached it, he put those pins in there. All of those things are additional injuries to the initial injury caused by the fall on the board. So, you know, I, I have two weeks of, of uh, injuries occurring to this man. And really, this is the beginning of the curing process. And uh, how it goes is how it goes. And I'm going to try to uh, do whatever I can and think about it as much as I can and uh, work on it as much as I can to, uh, of course, you know, stimulate the, the repair if, if that's possible. Anyway, that's the kind of update.